everybody, it's Tristan Emood with Mindful Living Realty Realtor, right here in Rapid City, South Dakota. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where we talk everything about moving to Rapid City, the Black Hills, and all the wonderful things of Rapid City, and the Black Hills. One of the questions people are asking me a lot lately is, how bad is the wind there? Now, I was born in the southwest corner of Minnesota. When we moved in 1990, we pretty much came straight across to Rapid City. And so, I've always been part of the upper Midwest. And the wind has always been there. It's always been something I thought was normal. It wasn't even something I added to my What's the Weather Like in South Dakota video, which I'll post somewhere up here. So it's time to answer the question, how bad is the wind in South Dakota? So, quick caveat, I of course live in Rapid City. I understand the wind speeds in the Rapid City area. We do have the Black Hills that has a tendency to kind of block some of that wind. So the winds in the prairie, the winds, even in Box Elder, it seems like there's a lot more wind than there is in Rapid City. So some of my comments made here in this video are referencing more Rapid City wind than across the state of South Dakota. If another city in South Dakota interests you, make sure you do your own research. But they'll probably say pretty close to what I'm saying. So to answer this question, the first question I had was, well, what causes wind anyway? According to the National Geographic website, here is what they say. Differences in atmospheric pressure generate winds. At the equator, the sun warms the water and land more than it does the rest of the globe. Warm equatorial air rises higher into the atmosphere and migrates toward the poles. This is a low pressure system. At the same time, cooler, denser air moves over the Earth's surface towards the equator to replace the heated air. This is a high pressure system. Winds generally blow from high pressure to low pressure. The boundary between these two areas is called a front. The complex relationship between the fronts causes different types of wind and weather patterns. So if you've looked at weather maps in the United States, you've probably seen maps like these, where there's this little swooshy thing that starts in Canada, comes down across Montana, and flows right through South Dakota on the way to Iowa as it flows back up. You've also seen pictures like this, with a jet stream is flowing in the same swooshy pattern right across the upper Midwest. As you can imagine, we'll have more wind when there's a weather pattern changing or there's something coming. You always know when the wind is blowing, there's something blowing in. Last weekend, I had some clients in town and for whatever reason, we had two days of consistent 20 to 30 mile an hour winds with gusts that reached up to 80 miles an hour in some areas. Now, that wasn't as bad as the 100 mile an hour in North Dakota, but I might just be prejudiced. Now, that was different. That was unusual. Even the locals around town are saying, what's up with all this wind? Usually we may have one day of strong winds and the next day it'll calm down considerably. But for whatever reason, we had two days of really strong winds, followed by the third day that was just under 20 miles an hour. If you do a Google search for the windiest states in the United States, as you might imagine, South Dakota always appears within the top 10, normally appears in the top five. We hold this honor right along with our Midwest neighbors, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Kansas. In the plains, there really isn't much to stop the wind. The wind was giving you a bit of a bug. Now you've been here before. Never fear, you won't have to grab onto your hat and grab onto something every day just to get out of the door but there's typically some sort of wind movement in South Dakota. I found this really helpful site called windfinder.com. So let's check out this windfinder.com website. So you can see here at the Rapid City Airport, it's currently blowing at seven miles an hour. Look at this, it's January 29th and we've got 40 degrees. It was 50 degrees yesterday. Go back to how things are weird around the Rapid City, South Dakota area. Here we have our yearly wind average of 13 miles per hour with an average gust of 32. I like this table down here talks about the speed of the wind per month. You can see here, 0 1 miles per hour, under 10% of the time throughout all the months. You can also see the trend of wind picking up through the spring and falling down during the summers and picking back up again during the fall. So really what we're taking away from this is if you want to go water skiing and you love to ski on smooth, clear glass like I do, then you go in August. Finally, we can notice that the really strong wind speeds, over 25 miles per hour, really happen at only a few percentage of the time every month, according to this map. So now let's check out Sioux Falls real quick. Their wind speed today is about 11 miles per hour, and as usual, they're a little bit cooler than us in the wintertime. If we scroll onto this map down here, of course the trends are very similar, gradually growing into April, going down to August, 
and then back up again through the fall, through October, November. What's interesting about this is the high percentage of low speed and the smaller percentage of over 25 mile an hour winds. Based on this map, the airport in Rapid City is actually a little bit windier than the airport in Sioux Falls. So what are some of the advantages of having lots of wind? Number one, less mosquitoes. Now I'm not gonna say there aren't any mosquitoes, but when the wind is blowing, it certainly calms down the activity of those mosquitoes around you, aside from those really still summer nights. Number two, cools you down in the summer. It's always nice to have a little bit of breeze going on, so at least when you're sitting in the shade, you can feel a little bit of that breeze, cools you down a little bit, makes that lemonade just a little bit sweeter. Number three, kite flying. Go fly a kite up to the highest height. Number four, wind energy. Now, I know South Dakota isn't the top of this list, but if you go east, there are a number of wind turbines doing their job. It really just is something that you kind of get used to. Just last night, I met with my clients that have been here since November, and I asked them, so have you noticed the wind? And they said, well, you know, except for those few days of wind that I mentioned earlier, not as much. We love to have the windows open for the breeze to bring in the fresh air during the spring, but not so much when it's blowing that snow around and gets kind of cold. So if wind is something that you absolutely hate, South Dakota might not be the best place for you. So what's the wind like where you're from? Leave me a comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching everybody. Have an amazing day. Remember, love where you live. When you send it flying up there, all at once you're lighter than air.